All right, pandemic calculus students, we're going to do 2, 15, and I think 17 and 18 from worksheet one, even though it's easy, just to make sure that you're doing it perfectly. So the first one, I'm just going to find the slope. And we know that we're going to do that by just finding the change in y over the change in x. So make sure you get it right. It's going to be delta y over uh, delta x. So here, this is going to be negative 2 thirds minus the negative 1 all over negative 1 half minus 4 thirds. I am far too lazy to do this fraction work, and you should be too. So I'm just going to multiply all of the numbers that are in there by 6 so that all of those fractions will just magically disappear. 6 divided by 3 gives me 2 times negative 2 gives me negative 4. And then 6 times 1 gives me, gives me 6. So that's simplified quite nicely. Then 6 times uh, negative 1 half gives me negative 3. Half of 6 is 3. Then 6 divided by 3 is 2. And 2 times 4 is 8. And so that's minus 8. And you get a very easy answer. This is negative on the bottom and positive on the top. So I'll call that negative 2 elevenths. And there it is. That is the best way to handle those fractions. So if you didn't do it that way, you know, next time, uh, do it that way. All right, so here we've got this uh, equation we're going to solve. Of course, we're going to get it ready to be factored by just moving the 12 to the other side. And this one, like a lot of these, just factor itself. Some people don't realize the trick to factoring, but I'll utilize it here. Uh, I'm going to choose 3 and 2, the middle two numbers. And I'm just going to say, well, what if that was a 3 and a 2? And I'll consider uh, some wrong answers just to show you how quickly you can discard them. Um, what if we chose 12 and 1 as our factors for 12? Well, notice that 12 doesn't have a home. I can't put 12 here because 12 and 3 both go into 3. And I can't put 12 there because they have a factor in common. So 12 and 1 is no good. And what if I chose 2 and 6? Well, notice that 6 has no home. I can't put the 6 here, and I can't put the 6 there. Uh, so the only numbers that I can possibly choose are 3 and 4. I mean, it looks like I have a lot of choices, but I really only have one choice. And then when I consider 3 and 4, I cannot put the 4 here because they would have a factor in common. I must put the 4 here, and that means I must put the 3 here. And then we can double check to see if that's possible that it would add up to 1. And, of course, here on the outside, that's 9. And here on the inside, that's 8. And 9 minus 8 would give me 1. If I just make this positive, that'd give me positive 9. And then this would be negative 8 if I make this negative. And, and now we've cracked the code. This one is 4 thirds, and this one is negative 3 halves. So nice and easy to do if you do it the correct way. And notice with 6 and 12, it looked like it had a lot of factors, and yet it just factors itself. All right, let's try a little bit of graphing. We're going to graph these by parent functions. It's the only way to do it. Please do not do this by making a t-chart and plotting points. It's slow, and it, uh, it's not as accurate. So the best way to do this is just to consider the parent function. You don't have to draw this part, but you can just like consider it in your head and say, oh, I know what squared looks like. And if you don't know, you can just say, OK, 0 squared is 0, 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4. Negative 1 squared is 1, and negative 2 squared is 4, and of course it looks like an upturned parabola. So this is the parent function that I really messily um, graphed here, and that's the one that we were considering. So now to make a perfect graph over here with the exact points in the right location, we'll just realize that this is shifted to the right 3, so that's 1, 2, 3 to the right, and up 2 because of the plus 2, and that's right there. And then this negative sign is going to make it a downturn parabola. And once again, 1 squared is 1. 1 squared is 1. So I'm going 1 in each direction. And then 2 squared is 4. So down 1, 2, 3, 4, and over 2. And you could get points in the other direction, 1, 2, 3, 4, and over 2. And you would get this perfectly downturn parabola. I'll try to connect it neatly, although it's kind of hard on this with this pen but it looks like this. And I think I've duplicated the answer. And I've missed this dot, so I'll just make that dot bigger. 
All right, so there's my downturn parabola, perfectly located, and all those points are exact correct points that you would get if you made a T-chart, but obviously this is much faster. Okay, so here is a cube, and I'm gonna draw this, and again, you do not have to draw this parent function, but I'm just making sure that you remember how to do this. Zero cubed is zero, one cubed is, is one, and two cubed is eight, so it's way up here at eight, and I'm just gonna draw it just kind of sloppily here, Negative one is negative one, and then negative two is down, way down there at negative eight. And of course, this is, you know, our parent function looking classically like a cube, right? So just messily drawn over there. And so now you can see that I'm to the left one and down one. So left one and down one, and that's gonna give me my new center point. That's this point right here. And then this one is positive. So it's gonna look very, very much like this shape right here one cubed is one, and two cubed is eight. I don't think it fits. One, two, three, four, five, six. It doesn't fit, so that's fine. Then one cubed is one this way. I'll just make it look really steep, pointing at the number that it would be had I had enough room. It'd be way up there somewhere. And then this one way down there somewhere. And these three points that fit on the graph, one, two, three, I could do more if I needed them. Like if over two and up eight fit, I could easily graph it and get the exact point for the next one. So there's my, my graph for number 18. Hey, I gave you a, a comic, and I inadvertently cut off the name of the comic, and you're probably thinking, that's the best comic ever. And that's because uh, Foxtrot, which is the name of, this con uh, name of this comic, is one of the best, along with Farside, best mathematical, geeky, hilarious, uh, uh, cartoons ever, and it's uh, the author is Bill Mend. He has a website where you can see all his all his comics for free, and you'll probably want to spend a little time on that because you're in a pandemic and you've got nothing better to do. All right, hope you enjoyed those four problems. Uh, catch you in class.